Greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, a nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and often deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality, to your health, and to your well-being, and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That's why we're here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis and eczema and rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system, the human healing system, is a healing and regenerating system. It's designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we want to hear from you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side. Let us help you change your life today. Let us help you change the lives of loved ones, friends, family members, workmates today as well. 844-236-6010 844-236-6010 is our number. Try to call in early so we can get to as many calls as possible. 844-236-6010 is our number today on the bright side and every day on the bright side. If you have a success story you'd like to share or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommend on the pro- recommended on the program, please call the phone team at 866-735-2470. You can also... Head over to brightsideben.com or pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com and order products directly off of the website. You can also check out my blog, which I update regularly with news stories as well as blog posts. That's pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com. And if you're interested in purchasing any of my skin health formulations, go to truthtreatments.com. Make sure you take a look at the retinol gel. 5% 5% retinol, great for hyperpigmentation, dark spots, anti-wrinkle, works on blemishes. Retinol is just a super, super, super all-around skin health ingredient. Retinol and vitamin C, the two most important, really the only two ingredients you need for your skin. And, of course, truthtreatments.com. Uh, my, truth treatment, my truth treatment skin health products feature vitamin C, fatty vitamin C, premium lipophilic vitamin C in super high concentrations, as well as retinol. Okie doke. We're talking toxins, especially fatty ones in the lymph and cholesterol and all has all as it has to do with lipofuscin, lipofuscin, dark fat. And that's the stuff that looks like a brown brown geographical maps in the skin as opposed to hyperpigmentation, dark spots that are just pigment. We're going to talk about that here uh, probably the next couple days. We'll talk about how you get rid of pigment, but still want to talk about lipofuscin, this dark stuff that accumulates on the skin that sometimes people confuse with pigment. If you've tried to use a skin lightener or tried to scrub your dark spot away and nothing happened except you got irritated, chances are you're dealing with lipofuscin as opposed to pigment or melanin. Toxins theoretically get drained out of the lymph when the lymph gets clogged up. The lymph is like a circulatory system for poisons as well as for fats and fatty vitamins. When that system gets clogged up, and it often gets clogged up, it's a a clogging lymph. Clogged lymph is associated with almost every single skin Uh, every single health issue you can name, including elevated cholesterol, by the way. Yesterday or last week, uh, yet another cholesterol-lowering drug was approved by the FDA. This was the first non-statin, non-statin cholesterol-lowering drug to come out in a long time. Uh, Actually, the first non-statin drug to come out maybe in 20 years, 25 years. I don't remember the the last non-statin cholesterol-lowering drug that came out. This is a whole new strategy for lowering cholesterol, and you're going to start to see more and more of these kinds of drugs coming out. If you've seen commercials for Humira and Remicade and, and uh, Eloquis, these are all called biologics, and this is a whole new way of doing business for the drug companies, and it is a serious, serious windfall for these companies. These are drugs, super high-tech drugs that imitate, mimic the immune system. The immune system, the body's defense system, works by shooting uh, 
shooting or killing uh, uh, enemies, if you will, shooting or killing bacteria, shooting or killing viruses, shooting or killing toxins that enter into the blood. That's how the immune system works. It has sort of like chemical warfare. It's really kind of cool when you think about it. These little chemicals called antibodies, which basically are missiles, are produced to target different enemies. Well, drug companies figure, well, if they, we can, the immune system is used to targeting and killing enemies, maybe we can use the same kind of strategies to target and kill things we don't want in the body, things that cause symptoms, things, things that cause problems. So they figured out how to get these antibodies to target inflammatory factors and pain-causing factors, and thus was born Humira-type drugs. Humira works by targeting inflammatory factors using immune system type technology, antibodies that are cloned and produced in a laboratory that instead of targeting the enemy will now target inflammatory factors as if the inflammatory factors are the bad guys. This is the stupidity of the medical model. The inflammatory factors, the things that cause inflammation, the chemicals that cause inflammation are there to protect us. And yes, they cause pain, but they cause pain to let us know there's a problem. So. The drug companies and the medical model, what they do is they produce antibodies in a laboratory to kill the inflammatory factors. And then they advertise them on TV and they sell them for thousands and thousands of dollars a year. That's how much it costs, thousands of dollars a year, $1,000, $2,000 a month to get your Humira and your Eliquis, these antibody imitating drugs. They call them monoclonal antibodies. They're cloned antibodies and they target inflammatory factors. Well, it was only a matter of time before they started using the same strategy for cholesterol lowering and thus was born the new drug Preluent, which targets cholesterol machinery on a cells, uses antibodies to kill cholesterol machinery, to kill receptors on the cell. And the logic being, well, if we kill things, if we kill, it's not exactly the receptor, but if we kill things on the cell, then maybe we can control how much cholesterol is in the blood. That's what Pralinwin is, and it costs about $14,000 a year to get on this stuff, and it is the dumbest, uh, I don't want to say the dumbest because there's many, many dumb drugs, but this is one of the top, top, uh, it's got to be on the top 10 list of stupid medical strategies. There's a lot of stupid medical strategies, but to actually suppress or to kill, <laughs> This is craziness. To suppress or to kill the mechanisms inside a cell that control cholesterol and how much cholesterol is pulled out of the blood, this is just idiotic. Not to mention the, the cost of this stuff. And by the way, by the way, they still haven't shown that it works. Yes, Praluin has not even been shown to protect against heart disease. It works to lower cholesterol. Some studies show it's going to lower your LDL cholesterol up to 60% as if that's a good thing, but they still don't know if the drug prevents heart attacks or strokes. Results for the studies aren't due for another two years, but the FDA put, that, put the drug through, and you can use your own uh, intuition on why the FDA rushed this drug through, even though it hasn't been shown to uh, reduce heart disease or strokes, and studies aren't expected. The results from studies aren't expected until 2017. So if you really want to lower your cholesterol, you don't need drugs to do it. Oh, and by the way, Praline doesn't come without side effects. Some of the side effects include memory loss and confusion and uh, pain and all of the things that you'd expect by, by poisoning the cholesterol-lowering system. If you really want to lower your cholesterol, one of the best things you could do is work on your lymph. Do you know the lymph is involved in draining cholesterol out of the body? You know, almost everybody as they get older has clogged lymph. I wonder if that has something to do with elevated cholesterol. Do you suppose that it has something to do with a clogged up lymph, considering the lymphatic system is responsible for draining out cholesterol? Did your cardiologist know that? Maybe you want to tell your cardiologist if he wants to put you on a statin drug or on this ridiculous preluent drug. Hey, doc, doesn't the lymphatic system have something to do with cholesterol excretion? Hey, doc, maybe it has something to do with my lymph. Maybe that's why exercise, by the way, works for lowering cholesterol. Maybe, and we know exercise improves lymphatic circulation. Maybe exercise, by improving lymphatic circulation, has its pro or anti-cholesterol benefits by helping drain cholesterol out of your body, by helping su in, uh, support the circulatory system, the lymphatic circulatory system. Once again, showing that the best strategies for lowering cholesterol, for improving heart health, for everything, really, are non-medical. They don't involve drugs, and they don't involve middlemen, i.e. doctors, medicine men. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Got lines open for you at 8 
844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the Longevity products or health challenges you or a loved one may be dealing with, let us help you out. If you want to get off your meds or help a loved one get off their meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you with that too. If you have skincare questions or questions about ingredients or formulations, the Longevity products, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, or if you have a success story, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised on the program, call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. All right, so lowering cholesterol. I don't know how we got to lowering cholesterol. We digress a lot on this program. We are going to talk lipofusion and melanin and skin health, but I just I, I read this thing about Preluin. I actually put a blog post on. Uh, pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com about it, and uh, it's just so egregious, man. What, what, are the, what are, first of all, what are cardiologists thinking? What are the drug companies thinking? How can people do this to other human beings? If you want to lower your cholesterol, if you want to protect your heart, it's not a drug issue. Nothing is a drug issue when it comes to chronic degenerative disease, really. And I'm saying this as a pharmacist. If you need a drug, a pain pill or an antibiotic, something short-term, that's one thing. But to be on a long-term drug, a prescription for long-term, it's just not right. It's not right for people we trust, medical professionals, to do this. As far as Preluin goes, this new uh, monoclonal antibody, so-called biologics, it's going to cost you $14,000 or more a year. It hasn't been proven to work. Please don't. Uh, if you do your research before you go on this thing. Side effects, though, those are for sure. You're definitely going to have toxicity when you use, it, when you use Preluin. And for a drug that's not going to work, to have to sub submit to the cost and the side effects, it's just... It's just bad business and bad medicine for sure. The fastest way to lower your cholesterol, first of all, we talked about moving your lymph. That's always a good thing. Exercise, getting on a rebounder. You don't even have to do, you don't have to do a lot of exercise, just a little bit. Just moving your body around can move the lymph and can help improve the excretion of cholesterol. Bile is extremely important, by the way, for the excretion of, excretion of cholesterol. We know bile is made in the liver. If you have a liver problem, that's going to cause a cholesterol issue. If you have a gallbladder removed, that's going to cause a cholesterol issue. And if you're eating a lot of sugar, sugar is a major, major, major reason why cholesterol levels go up. Sugar is actually a growth hormone. Did you know that? Sugar, glucose is actually a growth hormone. This is from uh, journal Cell Metabolism. Glucose as a mitogenic hormone. That basically means glucose causes cells to divide, causes cells to grow. And cells need cholesterol when they're dividing and growing. Hence, glucose will make your cholesterol go up. When was the last time your cardiologist told you that? Lower your blood sugar. The fastest way to lower your cholesterol is reduce your intake of sugar and refined flour. And using nutrients that help the body process sugar, also extremely important for lowering cholesterol. And the way I look at it, elevated cholesterol is a blood sugar issue. Elevated cholesterol is a diabetes or pre-diabetes issue, and diabetes or pre-diabetes are voluntary. They're eating disorders, eating diseases, problems with f food choices. Using nutrients that help the body process sugar, the B vitamins, niacin. Niacin has been the go-to non-medical, non-prescription uh, supplement, non-prescription strategy for lowering cholesterol for decades. We used to keep it in the back of the pharmacy when I started uh, in my pharmacy career in 1986, we would keep time-release niacin in the back of the pharmacy. This was the pre-statin days, and there weren't really a lot of strategies for lowering cholesterol before statins came out. There were a few drugs that were out, but niacin was like a go-to source uh, or a go-to strategy for lowering cholesterol. You could still use time-release niacin to lower your cholesterol. That's what I'd be doing. Lower your, reduce your intake of sugar, use your B vitamins. These are sugar metabolizing uh, uh, supplements or nutrients, thiamine, vitamin B1, niacin, vitamin B3. You can use 200 milligrams of a timed release niacin. Not only will it lower your cholesterol, but it will lower your sugar, improve your brain health, and it'll also reduce your blood fats too. Time release niacin capsules come in various strengths. You can buy them on the internet or you can get them from your pharmacist. The bees are water soluble. Remember, you're losing your bee complex throughout the day. And the more water you drink, the more you're losing. That's why the Beyond Tangy Tangerine is such a stupendous nutritional supplement. There was a guy, I didn't hear this myself, but somebody told me there was a guy ripping on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine and Longevity uh, a, a host on the GCN network, and I don't want to mention his name. And I didn't hear him say it myself. I just, one of, um, one of our, my listeners told me about it. 
and I hear this periodically. Listen, you guys, I wouldn't be telling you about the Beyond Tangy Tangerine if I didn't 100% believe that it was an absolutely stupendous nutritional supplement. The reason it's such a stupendous supplement is because it is a high concentration of water-soluble nutrients that we urinate out, especially the Bs and vitamin C for that matter. The Beyond Tangy Tangerine is a powerful nutritional supplement for a lot of reasons, but especially for lowering your cholesterol because of those B vitamins, which it's so easy to be deficient in. Eggs, organ meats, dairy, these are also good sources of Bs. And vegetables, don't forget your veggies are great sources of the B vitamins, and you get lots of fiber, of course, in your veggies. Celery juice, great source of fiber, great source of B vitamins, great source of electrolytes, and you'll lower your cholesterol, lower your sugar too. I don't want to digress too much, but the point I want to make here is that there are no prescription drugs that you need for chronic long-term issues. There are no prescription drugs that can make a chronic long-term issue better. They can only make them worse, even if they mask their symptoms. One of the, one of the worst things that can happen when you start using these prescription drugs is you're going to keep doing your, the, the same things you were doing that caused the problem in the first place. So when you're on metformin or you're on an anti-diabetic drug or you're on Preluin or a statin drug for your cholesterol, you st we still keep eating. We still keep eating the same crappy food. And it doesn't change the problem. It just changes the numbers. Drugs work with numbers. They don't help biochemistry. Drugs don't improve biochemical functioning, period, end of story. They mask symptoms, they hide symptoms, they change numbers. There is no way a prescription drug can make you better. Do you need them? Yes, sometimes you do. Antibiotics, sometimes you need, absolutely. Pain pills, I think every medicine cabinet should have some Percocet in it. You never know when you're gonna need a pain pill. You never know when you're gonna be very happy that you had some Percocet or Oxycontin or something in your medicine cabinet. But aside from that, chronic long-term drugs do nobody any good except stockholders, shareholders, and, and CEOs at, at drug companies. Elevated cholesterol is a sugar problem and it also invol involves lymphatic congestion that's part and parcel of our 21st century lifestyle. If you really wanna lower your cholesterol, reduce your sugar and flour intake, treat yourself like a diabetic, lower any, reduce your intake of any foods that spike your blood sugar and your insulin. And from a nutritional standpoint, use your B vitamins, your sweeties, your Beyond Tangy Tangerine, niacin timed release, fiber, vitamin B5, by the way, pantothenic acid has been shown to have some anti-cholesterol or cholesterol lowering benefits as well. And of course, exercise. We've known for decades that exercise works as an anti-cholesterol strategy, partially because it involves um, building muscle, you're building stuff, and cholesterol is a building substance, so your body will use the cholesterol. Instead of having it float around, it's going to use the cholesterol to build muscle. And then also uh, via this lymphatic drainage mechanism. When was the last time somebody got a prescription for a rebounder? When was the last time your insurance company picked up a bill for a gym membership? Probably never. But you can get all the statins you want, now you can get your monoclonal antibodies. Anyway, all of, this, all of this is to say there are many, many things we can do to keep ourselves healthy and to reduce lipofusion accumulation. Keep that lymph clean. Move your lymphatic fluids around. And there's another very important way to help clean out the lymphatic system. We'll tell you about that uh, tomorrow as we continue talking lipofusion, melanin, skin health, and more on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll be back right after this. Bright side. If you're in the Minnesota area, I'll be doing a couple of talks uh, next week in Minneapolis and St. Paul. I'll get you the details here. Got to look them up actually, but they're all brightsideben.com. Brightsideben.com. You also find all the longevity products at brightsideben.com. And if you want to purchase any of, uh, if you want to purchase any of my Truth Skin Health products, you can go to truthtreatments.com. Truthtreatments.com. Our number today, 844-236-6010. Tomorrow, we'll continue talking skin health. We'll talk about nutrients for helping reduce lipofuscin, lipofusion, as they say, dark fat. That's kind of graphic. I like that, dark fat. That's exactly what it is. It's sticky, fatty, gooky stuff that sticks, into the, uh, sticks in various parts of the body. You can drain it away, and you can use nutrients to help prevent its formation, and you're not going to be a... You're not going to be surprised when I tell you the nutrients. It's the same stuff we talk about all the time. And, and we'll talk about some other strategies for reducing lipofusion. And again, you're not going to be surprised because we talk about those all the time. That's the thing about health. It just repeats itself over and over and over again because it's simple stuff. 
we're led to believe that this whole issue of taking care of ourselves and taking care of our bodies is complicated because people, you know, they want to charge us for, for, uh, for the drugs and for the surgical procedures, et cetera, et cetera. But you don't need all that stuff. All right. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. Time to hit the phones. Let's go to Marjorie in Washington. What's going on? Welcome to the Bright Side, Marjorie. Good morning. Good morning, pharmacist Ben. First of all, I'd like to apologize for my phone. I have quite a delay on it. So. Oh, no problem. I, I, you sound good anyway, to me. Um, I'm calling about my daughter. Okay. Uh, she's 22. Okay. About a couple of years ago, she started getting all these random um, symptoms. Well, uh, can I just describe. go through the list of them? Yeah, just a few. Not You don't have to do all, just a few. Give oh, me a well, sense I, of what's I, happening. No, it, all of them are important. In case she started getting uh, tingling, occasional tingling and num- numbness in her feet and hands. Okay. Sudden weakness in arm. Then what, she was got what was that? What was that? I'm sorry. You're right. Your phone is kind of weird there. I heard t- yeah. tingling in the feet and hands. And then what else did you say? Sudden. You know, just like a, a sudden weakness in her arm. You know what? Okay. I can I can't. I'm you. You do have a weird phone, and I can't hear what you're saying. Okay. Heard, um. Hold on a minute. Let me see if I can. Turn this up. Um, let me put on the can you hear me now? Yeah, that's better. Go ahead, Marjorie. Okay. All right. All right. So she had um tingling, numbness in her feet. You okay. Know, occasional. Okay. Sudden weakness in arm. Okay. Then she got, they took her into the emergency room. She, they thought she had a heart attack. She How had old is your daughter? How old she's is she? She's 22. Okay. And they thought she had a heart attack because of the numbness? No, 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 no. This was, uh, she started feeling like she was having a heart attack. Um, uh, she, they took her into the emergency room. They did tests. She had, her initial EKG was abnormal. And they found inflammation of her chest muscle. Okay. That sounds, sounds like there's some kind of infection going on. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. Very well, soon. hang on, though, Marjorie, because i got a bunch of calls here, so I want to cut to the chase. Okay, Is okay. She, Well, hang on. Let me ask you a couple questions, okay, Marjorie? Okay. Is she, was she perfectly healthy before? No, no problems otherwise? Yes, I'll tell you now why. She showed me a, a month and a half ago. She called me, and she said, Mom, I think I have Lyme disease. And I said, why would you think that? And she said, did you see the picture I sent you? And I said, no. She put it back on the phone, and it was the bullseye rash. Okay. She now, said she, she looked at her picture. She said, Mom, it was a little, uh, you know, it was right before she went to, down to California. Was, was she was hiking? Was she in the ago. woods? Was she hiking around, that yes. kind of thing? She, okay. We were down at my mother's house down in St. Mary's. And then she went back to California. It was about 10 days later. This rash appeared on her leg, on her okay. thigh. Okay. So it could have been. I mean, did they give her antibiotics? Did she get a course of antibiotics? She didn't. She didn't. She didn't think. She thought it might be Lyme, but someone said, oh, no, it's probably just an insect bite. And she forgot about it. She saved it to her phone. I've shown it to an internal medicine doctor. She said, oh, yeah, that's the classic bullseye rash. My daughter went to her her the military base where their station, her husband's stationed, and the internal medicine doctor says, oh, well, that's the in, that is the bullseye rash, but because you don't show positive on the Lyme test. Uh, they didn't give her antibiotics. Well, here's no. the deal. Lyme disease, Lyme disease is pretty easy to treat in the early stages. They give them doxycycline or tetracycline or something like that. Now, if she does have, if she has the rash and she, she has the rash and she, she still has the numbness and the symptoms, is that correct? Yeah, but that's not all she has. She ha- it has affected her brain, her huh? heart. This doesn't sound like, well, I think there's something else going no, on no, here. No, 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 no. She's, you didn't even let me finish. She's got ocular migraines where she's got these, you know, flashing crescents, and it starts at the side of her eyes, and then it goes into the front of her eyes. She has them for 20 minutes or so. She has brain fog. She's a very intelligent girl. Well, it sounds she's like something's going on. Well, Marjorie, hang on, ma'am. Hang on. I don't need to hear the whole list. Sounds like something's definitely going on. Uh, if you think it's Lyme disease... Okay, and like you said, the the classic rash, the bullseye rash, is what they call it, as you as you pointed out. Uh, if you think it's Lyme's disease, they give us, they give antibiotics, and that usually takes care of it. Okay. The doctor now, said because she showed negative on the Lyme disease test. Find another doctor. Uh, I know the, the the problem with Lyme is, and I found this because her cousin also has it over in 
Matt Martha's Vineyard. Yeah. She got bit by the tick. She's been suffering from it for eight years. You know, they gave her the doxycycline right away. Well, pretty soon after she got it, but she still suffers because she's got a really lowered immune system from it. But okay, all right. Well, the, here's the thing: that, you hit the a, you hit the nail on the head. I'll, let me. Ha- I don't need the details because I get the picture, Marjorie. But here's okay. what you want to do: a couple things. First of all, the antibiotics, the doxycycline, and the amoxicillin; those usually work. The second strategy that you want to do is you want to strengthen her immune system. You can't really. Yeah, with the side, aside from the antibiotics, you're not going to be able to get into the body and get rid of the Lyme. But what you can do is you can strengthen the body, and the body will get rid of the Lyme. Yeah, that's what that's what I want to do. That's the way you'd go. Now, so what you want to do for that is you want to start to uh, any any load on the body, anything that burdens the body, has to be removed so the body can marshal or harness all of its resources for taking care of the problem. So if she has problem foods, if she's if foods that cause uh, cause issues, those need to be eliminated. Most of the immune system is in the digestive system. So once you start working with the digestive system, and, and it's in your interest, you said she's perfectly healthy, but it's in your interest to find places where you can work. If she has any kind of food problems, eliminate the uh, eliminate those well, foods. Yeah, she does. She can't eat tomatoes. And now, she... we're, now we're starting to get so, to a place you can work. So if she has a problem with tomatoes, chances are she has other problems as well. So start to work with those. Probiotics, good bacteria, have an ability to not only support the immune system, but they'll fight bad bacteria. So using good bacteria, probiotics, the bioluminately essence, for example, uh, fermented foods, as many, uh, whatever kind of fermented foods you can think of, sauerkraut, miso, tempeh, kimchi, get a book called The Art of Fermentation. Super high doses of vitamin C can be helpful. By that, I mean five to 10 grams a day in divided doses. You don't want to do too much of it all at once. The Beyond tangy tangerine, have her sip on that all day long. Your ultimate essential fatty acids can be helpful. The most important minerals for the immune system are zinc and selenium. Make sure she's using 50 milligrams of zinc picolinate a day. Get her on the ultimate selenium. Have her do 600 micrograms a day. Have her stabilizing her sugar as well because sugar represents a major burden on the immune system. Hang on. There's a few more things I'll tell you about. So don't go away, Marjorie. If you're on hold, we'll get to you as well when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. All right, we're back on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. Talking to Marjorie in Washington about her daughter. Uh, Marjorie, you there, ma'am? Yes, I am here. Okay, so, I, you know, this whole Lyme's disease thing is still very controversial, and I'm on the fence about it myself. Uh, it doesn't seem... I have done lots of studies on it. Well, hang on. And let me it just is get... a very bad thing. Let me just get this out, sweetheart, okay? And then we'll let you talk. And then we'll let you talk. It seems to me like if you have a bacterial infection, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. The whole idea of a chronic, long-term bacterial infection, a persistent infection that stays low level, just doesn't sound right to me. If a bacterial infection, bacteria should persist. They should grow. If you have the bacteria in there, they get worse. They, the bacteria grow, and they proliferate, and you get more and more bacteria, and then you get sicker and sicker and sicker. You get worse and worse and worse. To have this low-level kind of thing where it just stays over the course of, you mentioned, seven years, Okay, no, no, no. I, well, let me finish. Let me finish. I and I then I'll let you talk. I'll let you talk as long as you want. I'll let you talk as long as you want. Let me just finish. From a, from a, a medical perspective, it doesn't make sense that a bacterial infection would stay low level for long term. Now, that's just my hunch. I don't know for sure. I'm not going to make an opinion. And, uh, I have a lot of opinions about a lot of things, but I haven't formed a, 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 an opinion on this just yet. So go ahead now. What were you saying? What were you going to say, Marjorie? Okay. All right. My my daughter's friend from her school here, where I live here in Spokane, she's got Lyme disease. Okay. Hers went the same way as Anna's. Okay. It was low level first. It got worse. She had to she had to leave school. Okay. Uh, now she it is now um, I don't know. It's about since 2011 they found out it was Lyme. They almost lost her 20 times this year. Well, you she said they bedridden. found out. Well, hang on. You she, said they found out it was Lyme. What do you mean they found out? They they found the bacteria. She, she had had symptoms like Anna's. They weren't real severe. And then uh, other things, I guess, came in uh, with this. And she got Babesia and all of these things. I, I, ma'am, you're throwing, like, Marjorie, you're throwing symptoms at me here, and that's great, but I still don't hear why you think it's Lyme's. Do they actually find the bacteria? Lyme's disease oh, yeah, is a bacteria. Yeah. No, no, they, no, she's okay. at the high, you know, no, she, now, now they have, no, in 2011 when they did the test again, she had a high 
thing of Lyme. In fact, hers is probably they found one the of bacteria. The worst cases. When you say the high yeah. Lyme, they found Borrelia. That's the name yeah. of the bacteria. Yeah. Borrelia yeah. burgdorferi. Yeah. They found it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Now, is that the case with your daughter? They found the bacteria as well. She's only been tested once, and it was a. It, I guess the two tier test does not. It's not really her. My daughter's aunt is a pediatrician, and she said uh, it's that not, doesn't impress me, ma'am. That you should well, know by now. That doesn't flawed. impress she me. She said it's a. She said it's a very flawed test because she's done a lot of studies on okay. it now after her niece got it. So okay, so you got two. This is this is the deal. I wish we, you know. I'd love to talk. If you want to talk about it a lot, you can send me an email with your phone number. I would. I would a, like to do that. Yeah, send me like an email with your phone number, and we'll have a conversation about it. Because now's not the okay. time. But just so you know, if you want to take care of Lyme's disease, there's two strategies. Number one is the antibiotics. Your doctor didn't want to do that for whatever reason. That's okay. So the next strategy is to strengthen your daughter's immune system. You do that by number one eliminating. And this is for everybody listening, by the way. You do that by eliminating the load on the body. Sugar is a major load on the body. Uh, digestive issues, uh, digestive uh, food intolerances and such, things that she has problems digesting, that's another load on the body. So, so working on the digestive system, number one, and then working on blood sugar, number two. I mentioned the probiotics, good bacteria before we went to break, and those are important for strengthening the immunity, yeah. strengthening the immune system, and uh, actually combating bad bacteria. Fermented food is also important. Vitamin C, yeah. mega important. High doses of vitamin C are tremendously antibacterial. Tremendously. And how much did you say she should have? Oh, well, there's no real dose on it, but 1,000 milligrams every few hours is a great place to be. But, but you don't want to go into di uh, loose stools or diarrhea or cramping or bloating. That's the one problem if you do high doses of vitamin C. Beyond Tangy Tangerine is a great way to get your vitamin C because you'll get all your nutrients and all your other nutrients with it as well. Zinc, okay. 50 milligrams a day is a must-have. Selenium, uh, uh, 600 micrograms a day is also a must-have for all bacterial, viral, immune system kinds of issues. Okay. And then if she wants to do a couple other things, and it's probably a good idea that she does, make sure she's doing her deep breathing techniques and relaxing the body. When the body is relaxed, it heals. When the body is stressed, it doesn't heal. So making sure she's doing all of her relaxing strategies, with the exception of a quick burst of exercise periodically, once a day or once every couple of days or every three days, maybe get on a treadmill for a couple of minutes yeah, and just do a sprint. And do some kind of sprinting to improve lymphatic drainage. Well, I'm sorry. I don't think she can do that. She's got she extreme fatigue where she just washing her hair in the sink is she has to take a one and a whatever half. Whatever she can do, whatever she can do, even if it's for 10 seconds, even if she okay. can just do jumping jacks for 10 seconds or five seconds, everybody can do okay. something. One second. Okay. All right. All so right. shoot me an email, ben at ksco.com. Put your phone number in there and I'll what get back to you. Again? What is that? Ben. Mean? Ben, B-E-N, at K for King, S for Sam, C for Cat, O for Oscar com. And thanks for your call. God bless you. Good luck with Thank everything, Marjorie. I hope that works. Okay. Roger in Ohio. What's up, man? Welcome to the Bright Side. Hey, hello. Uh, hey, buddy. I have a friend that has interstitial pulmonary fibrosis. In oh, my goodness. How can you even say that? That's a tongue twister <laughs> yes. if ever there was one. He's, he's got messed up lungs. How about that? Yeah. yeah okay. Thanks. Messed up lungs. Can, can you turn the? Can you turn your volume down? Because I got an echo there, Roger. If you're if you're listening. Uh, let me see. Maybe turn your radio, radio off and just just go on the well, phone. Well, I, I don't have the radio on, but. Oh well, maybe that's is that me. Better now. No, I got an echo. But I'll just go ahead. All right. Interstitial pulmonary fibrosis is when you get fibers forming in the lungs. Interstitial means between the cells. Pulmonary means lungs. Fibrosis means fibers forming. Fibers forming are, is a standard way that the body breaks down. When the body is weak, cells will secrete, or when parts of the body are weak, cells will secrete fibers to strengthen that part. So basically, you're dealing with weak lungs. People have interstitial fi pulmonary fibrosis when their lungs have been attacked either acutely with bacteria or chronically with smoking, usually, or pollution or, or some, kind of, uh, some kind of toxicity in the body. So you want to treat it as a sign that there's general toxicity. It's probably, if it's an older person, it's probably a chronic condition. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to work with any toxicity that's getting into the body, and that usually means digestive toxicity. So working with the digestive system is always going to be important for pulmonary issues, pulmonary fibrotic issues. And by the way, if he's got pulmonary fibrosis, chances are he's got fibrosis in other parts of his body as 
well. So you're going to want to work on the digestive health strategies. That's uh, the Biolumin Nightly Essence, your probiotics, uh, uh, intermittent fasting, caloric restriction, staying away from problem foods, you know the drill. Then uh, there's an important relationship between sugar toxicity and lung issues. So you're going to want to make sure that he's keeping himself away from anything that spikes his blood sugar and insulin. Use the sweeties. Magnesium is also very important for the blood sugar. There's lots of things important for blood sugar. Zinc is important for blood sugar. Vitamin A is important for blood sugar. And of course, keeping your sugar down, that's the most important thing from the diet. And then the third thing is working with oxygenation. If he's got a pulmonary issue, he's going to be low oxygen, and that can make matters worse. So practicing his deep breathing techniques can be helpful. If he wants to use nutrients specifically for the lungs, there's a whole bunch of them. Probably vitamin E is the most important lung vitamin, although vitamin C is also important. Uh, uh, vitamin E and vitamin C. And then omega fatty acids are also important for lung functioning. His ultimate EFAs will provide him with, with his, e, with his uh, essential fatty acids, three capsules morning, three capsules afternoon, three capsules at night, and then eating omega-3 rich foods is also probably advisable. Fish is a great omega-3 uh, food. Flax seeds can help with omega-3s. Omega-6s are found pretty much everywhere. Uh, avocados are my favorite way to get omega-6s, uh, but you'll get omega-6s pretty much from all grains and seeds. So working with omega-6s is also important. Digestion, blood sugar, oxygenation, staying away from problem foods, keeping, uh, using a good nutritional supplement program, including vitamin E and vitamin C, omega fatty acids, and acetylcysteine, my favorite alt, uh, uh, ancillary or accessory nutrient, N-acetylcysteine, is also very important for lung health. N-acetylcysteine is actually a drug for the lungs called Mucomist. Thanks for your call, Roger. Hope we helped you out. And let's see if we get one more in here. Angela in Florida, what's going on? Welcome to the Bright Side. Hi, pharmacist. Can you hear me okay? Yes, ma'am. What's going on? Question um, around adrenal fatigue. Okay. Um, so I'm calling just because it's just been taking a toll on me, and I notice it by the sleep pattern and the oily skin. My question is around uh, the caffeine. I realize I used to get through the day by coffee with my 8 to 5, but I hear the caffeine is horrible just for the body, especially the adrenal mm. gland. So well, I'm trying to figure out a solution. Horrible is a heavy word. Horrible is a heavy word. Caffeine's not great, but it's not, I would, I'd say there's lots, lots worse things than caffeine, depending on the amount that you're doing. The best, the quickest way to handle adrenal fatigue is salt water. Uh, get some Celtic sea salt, put a little bit in water, and drink it. The adrenal glands handle your minerals. You can use the cherry mints also, or the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. That will also get you minerals. The adrenal glands contain large amounts of zinc and large amounts of vitamin C. Those are two very important nutrients for adrenal health. Uh, 50 milligrams of zinc picolinate, and then lots of vitamin C. Vitamin C is just good for everything. Uh, your Beyond Tangy Tangerine will get you some of that. The B vitamins are also important for the adrenals, especially B12. Get some B12 injections. I love my B12 injections. Uh, B12, any naturopath or doctor can do that for you. And then deep breathing techniques, slow deep breathing and relaxing the body, lightening up. Uh, there's so many more things to do, Angela. If you can call back tomorrow, I'll give you some more ideas. Thanks for your call. Appreciate it. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening, friends. Have yourselves a wonderful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.